అందరికీ నమస్కారములు టుడే ఈజ్ ద ఫోర్త్ డే ఆఫ్ అవర్ క్లాసెస్ ఆన్ యోగా బై డాక్టర్ సిఎస్ఆర్ ప్రభు గారు ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ త్రీ మంత్స్ సర్టిఫికేట్ కోర్స్ ఆన్ సనాతన ధర్మ అండ్ వీఆర్ ఇన్ ద థర్డ్ మంత్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ కోర్స్ అండ్ దిస్ దిస్ మంత్ వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు లెర్న్ యోగా క్లాసెస్ అండ్ ఇట్స్ థియరీ బిహైండ్ ఇట్ now let us start with vande mataram by challa chitti babu garu vande mataram vande mataram sujala sufala మలయజ శీతలాతరం వందే మాతరం సుబ్రజ్యోష్ణాపులకితయామిని పుల్లకుసుమితద్రుమదళశోభిని సుహాసిని సుమధురభాషిణి సుఖదాం వరదాం మాతరం వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం ధన్యవాదములండి నా లెట్ ఇస్ ద రిక్వెస్ట్ టు సెలెక్ట్ చేయారు టు can prarthana please and you just call i think one minute one సర్వభ్యో నమస్కార లెట్ ఇస్ మెడిటేట్ ఫర్ అ మినిట్ సో జెంట్లీ క్లోజ్ యువర్ ఐస్ రిలాక్స్ యువర్ బాడీ అండ్ ఫోకస్ ఆన్ యువర్ బ్రెత్ గణానా గణపతి గుం హవామే కవింకవీనాముపమశ్రవస్తమ జ్యేష్ఠరాజం బ్రహ్మణాం బ్రహ్మణస్పత ఆనశృన్వన్నూతి బిసీద సాధనం ఓం శ్రీ మహాగణాధిపతయే నమ ఓం ప్రణో దేవీ సరస్వతీ వాజేభిర్వాజినీవతి దీనామవిత్రయవతు ఓం శ్రీ మహాసరస్వత్యై నమ గురురేవ గతిర్ గురుమేవ భజే గురుణైవ సహాస్మి నమో గురవే న గురో పరమం శిశురస్మి గురో మతిరస్తి గురౌ మమ పాహి గురో జ్ఞానానందమయం దేవం నిర్మల స్ఫటికాకృతి ఆధారం సర్వ విద్యానాం హయగ్రీవముపాస్మహే శృతిస్మృతి శృతిస్మృతి పురాణానాం ఆలయం కరుణాలయం 
नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्य वंदे भगवतन पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम असतो मद्गमया तमसो मोतिर्गमया मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमया ओं शाति 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 मातृदेव भव पितृदेव भव आचार्य देव भव अतिथिदेव भव ओं सहनावत सह नौ भुनक् सह वीर कर्वाह तेजस्वी नवदीतमस्तु मिदिषा वह ओं शाति 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 श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ धन्यवाद नाउर प्रभु प्लीज Nectar Shakti Vikasak, I exercise without light. Keep the finger tip near the eyes, six inches away. Keep watching it and lift the finger around with the eyes without closing the eyes to the top until your eyes burn. When your eyes burn, you close your eyes and come down. Till then, keep watching without winking. When you do this, you should not close your eyes. Until the eyes burn at the top. We are putting pressure on the circulatory muscles, which adjust. The cyaxes can protect your eyes and even cure the eyesight problems. Next, kapola kashak trikasak. Thank you. 
नेक एक्सरसाइज ग्रीवा Fourth exercise for the neck. I'd skip the hand exercise and go for the new exercise of the front. So we start with the chest and skip hands today. Keep on stretching the hands with deep breathing inside. This is for the upper chest. Three to six times you can do it. This is the next exercise for the lower chest. Breathing in, bend backwards. Now we go to the abdomen. Hold the abdomen inside after breathing out for a few seconds, then release it. That is it. Udhyana Bhattha for the Udhyana Shakti number one. Number two onwards as Astriya type breathing. And uh, looking up, looking down. Minimum 10 times, maximum 20 times each. Then we have Kak Mudra, which is breathing into the mouth and all. Thank <laughs> you. 
At 60 degrees, breathe out and move the abdomen up and down. And there is an exercise called Naudi, which is to bring one vertical column in the center of the abdomen by pressing above the knees after breathing out. The column can be moved to the left or right, putting hands on Now we have some new exercises to be taught, that is for the trunk. The, after the abdomen, we have the trunk. So for the trunk, first exercise is to bend back while breathing in with hands at the back. And breathing out, bend forward and touch the head to the knee as much as possible. Next is to press the legs as much as you can. And then bend forward, breathing out, and then back breathing. And then bend forward, press the head to the ground. Third is to bend forward and push the head backwards. Let's keep the legs apart. Next is Kati Chakra Shakti Vikasak, which is revolving the hands in circular motion, legs kept separately. Look backwards. Then return back. Turn your hand also. Now, Mula Thar Shakti Vikas, pulling the rectum upwards by tightening the legs, thighs, buttocks, and pull up the rectum and hold when breathing in.
That's same thing, four inches apart. Just four inches apart. Repeat the same, Mooladhara Shakti Vikasa, Mula Bandha. Pull up the rectum, like when you want to stop going to an atrium, how you stop? The same way you have to pull up. Next, one foot apart. Upasthatata Swadishtara Chakra Sutri. Pull up the rectum as well as the bladder upwards. And hold for a few seconds, then breathe out and release. Next. Kick your buttocks with your legs. Next is this is for the thighs. The standard exercise we do in the school level also, in GT and other things. Now the opposite, breathe out, go. Next, we go for the chair, Kurchi. This is for neck and the knees. And then we have the easy chair. Next. Circles, ankle, and ankle joint. Spring. So go to Shavasana.
until the breathing becomes deep, long, you take rest. and turn to the left. <laughs> Back to center. Turn to the right. Come back to center. Take deep, long breathing.
Feel the breathing going in and coming out. Long, deep, relaxing breath. Feel the breathing going into each part of the body. First left hand, then left leg, then right hand, right leg. Then get up and start doing pranayama. Today we'll skip all the asanas because we have done a lot of sukshmayama. <coughs> there is one yoga nidra whose basic version I showed today just to imagine the breathing prana passing through various parts of the body. But there is a full version which I will show some other time, where each and every inch of the body will be felt mentally, energizing with prana. I'll show you some other day. So today we'll be doing pranayama now, ordinary nanogom below pranayama.
go for meditation feel the breathing going in and coming out that is called prana pana sati or ana pana sati all of same feeling the breathing going in and coming out then with every breathing in you will feel so every breathing out you feel hum so hum so hum No feel total blankness. Feel peace with every breath.
So we go for home meditation. Before we start long home, just feel the breathing peacefully with no thoughts, total blankness. Shanti, 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 So the whole idea, objective behind this meditation is to get peace. Peace means mind, mental peace. The mind becomes very calm, then you get peace, not otherwise. So how will you get the mind peace? Because it has to be calmed down. So breathing is the controlling factor. If you can make the breathing deep like pranayama and then regular through observation of the no harm meditation. Then your mind is calm. <clears throat> Finally, when you do home meditation, you are totally calmed down. You are getting absorbed into yourself. So when the mind is absorbed into yourself, you are in yourself. You are at peace. Otherwise, you will be getting distracted with false fake identities created by the thoughts and mind. All the emotions, all the problems in the world are coming due to emotions, negative emotions. So I developed one framework called Dharma Yoga framework where any problem in this world, either inside yourself, problem, some problem inside yourself, like psychological problem, or problem outside yourself, vis a -vis with your neighbors. Your neighbors can be your family members or your colleagues or your physical neighbors, etc., etc. So the problems which are coming with your neighbors are due to the same negative emotions which you are having within yourself. Tanento Jagamanta. What you see outside is actually your own feelings. If you say somebody is very bad, that means you are bad. If somebody is very angry, then that means you are angry. You are causing that anger. So what are those negative emotions? So when you observe your thoughts, I told you there is a Dharma Yoga meditation. What you do there is you go on observing your thoughts. So when you observe your thoughts, you get all kinds of thoughts and memories and emotions. If no 
emotion is coming no intense emotion is coming then it's fine then only stray thoughts will come and go and you can reach blankness through these techniques but in case you are getting thoughts intense thoughts if you observe carefully you will find that the intense thoughts are nothing but ten of the negative emotions one of the ten of the negative emotions what are the negative emotions ahankaram start with the ego arrogance mamakaram attachment ragam dvesham hatred kama desire and krodha anger when desire is not fulfilled it will become anger if the desire is fulfilled then it will become greed more lobha and if lobha is also getting fulfilled then it will become moha then after that is mada pride then i am very great like and finally matsarya jealousy what you don't have and somebody else has whatever it is it can be because nobody can have everything like i don't have hair on my head so if i can feel jealous about all those people who have hair on their head i don't have all teeth so i can feel jealous about all those who have teeth so this 10 negative emotions they are the causes of ruining situations ruining feelings inside yourself towards your neighbors your behavior and all possible problems in the world i claim that all problems in the world are originating from this stem so when you observe your thoughts in dharma yoga meditation you will find that one of these ten is coming again and again anger lust greed jealousy or arrogance hatred or attachment so you keep on observing every day one of these ten first you identify which one is making you strangle suffer it is making you suffer so observe that keep on observing it every day so after a few days that will become slightly diluted or weakened so when it becomes weakened you force it out and replace it with it opposite with its opposite substitute with its opposite like anger the opposite is love so like suppose you have anger against your son or your brother or your wife or anybody then when the anger becomes weakened you forcibly substitute remove it and replace it with its opposite which is love the lovable moments you had with your son or with your wife or with your daughter or with your anybody so those those moments you had lovable relationship the substitute so the anger is gone similarly you do it every day then no more anger no more hatred on that person so when you meet that person next time you will talk as if you have no anger or no hatred with love you will talk so that person will be confused first why is this man talking so nicely to me and i am his enemy or her enemy or whatever so then that person will realize that something changed so then he will also reciprocate he will also be lovable and affectionate instead of angry and negative emotions of hatred towards you so that way you can transform the other person also after you transform yourself so in this way you can spread the transformation the internal transformation so after this internal transformation you can do go to the extent of personal family transformation and organizational transformation that is in your work to work place environment and finally it will result in societal transformation this is called dharma yoga meditation technique so the opposites of these negative 10 negative emotions are more than 10 positive emotions serenity regularity absence of vanity sincerity simplicity veracity equanimity fixity non irritability adaptability humility tenacity integrity nobility magnanimity charity generosity pure so the opposite each one of these negative emotions has more than one opposite like uh, greed the opposite of greed is charity generosity magnanimity so altruism so all these are the opposites of greed that's why people say you, you donate today i'm going 
actually i am going and uh, doing annadanam in one temple so donate you give money to others somebody is in need you give money somebody wants food you give food somebody wants clothes you give clothes somebody wants knowledge you give knowledge somebody wants health you give health through yoga practice so if you do that broad mindedly you are expanding your heart heartfulness so when you do that you are helping yourself to be relieved from the contraction which you have been suffering due to greed all these years because everybody is greedy greed runs the market market forces stock market everything businesses all are based on greed but when you release that tension of greed the withdrawal when you release it and open up by charity that is why all these people do charities so that they will be relieved first so the opposite of anger is love love you know how you love your children small babies or how you love animals small animals that love when you express you are relieving yourself from hatred so each of these negative emotions which is so dangerous and is causing so much damage so much harm and loss to your personality like the more you entertain this negative emotion suppose you are very angry you are keeping your anger for longer and longer time you are suppressing it of course there are two ways to handle anger when you when something happens which you don't like you react with anger laughed out then you are relieved but then it will have impact on the other side person who is receiving it your family member then he he or she will retaliate but if you not retaliate that is another issue but as far as you are concerned you have relieved your anger but there are people who suppress their anger and develop into hatred and that suppression will be more harmful it will be resulting in uh, uh, health disorders heart attacks high blood pressure and all these things so first of all suppression is not correct it has to be relieved but it is better you relieve it in such a way that it will not be causing damage to the opposite party if you can do that in a very nice way polite way explaining if you do like this this will be wrong you should not do like this like that as a guidance that's fine but if you attack another person out of your anger that person will reattack you and that is how wars happen so i am going into the deep root causes of all conflicts all problems in this world so these 10 negative emotions are the root cause of all problems i call them adharma and replacing the adharma with the opposite of adharma is dharma dharma comprises of all positive values satya ahimsa brahmacharya aste aparigraha shauch santosh tapas swadhyaya ishvara pranidhana these are the yamas and niyamas of the yoga shastra of the ashtanga yoga so in fact all gurus all schools of philosophy even all religious leaders all religious texts also they are telling the same thing in different ways tana kopa me tana shatru your anger is your enemy tana shanta me tana kuraksha your peace is your protection tana santosha me swargamu your happiness is your heaven tana dukha me narakamandu your misery is your hell so daya chut the compassion will become your friend or so these are the statements you find in all the poetry all wise men all the puranas all the bhagavad gita all the upanishads everywhere in fact all the upasana paddhatis like you you meditate on rama you meditate on buddha you, all are meant for getting those qualities of those personalities into yourself like rama is you know is a truthful man he is righteous dharma buddha is peaceful he is in deep meditation you see carefully all these people buddha or even jain or even the devtas all are sitting in padmasana and they are meditating like lord shiva what does shiva do 
in making deep meditation. So people say Shiva, 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 they will go on doing bhajan of Shiva. But what Shiva himself is doing, he is in deep meditation. He is in total peace by in himself. So that is Samadhi, highest level. Okay, now basically in our world we are suffering all problems because of these 10 negative emotions, round figure. And to reduce them, to dilute them first by observation, by calmness, by separating yourself. If you are, the two ways, anger is there. If you are you are observing anger. Okay, I am getting anger. So you are observing. That means you are not anger. But if somebody is not able to observe, he himself is becoming angry. He is anger himself. That is worse situation. You should be able to observe first. If you are able to observe in meditation or even during the time when you get angry, if you are able to observe anger, independent of the anger, as a witness, then you are not anger. You are not angry. Anger is something else. You are something else. So go on observing. The anger becomes lesser and lesser. And finally, you can remove it and replace it with its opposite. So what do we do in our uh, companies or jobs when somebody is doing something wrong? Even in government, if somebody is uh, doing something totally wrong, say in military, suppose somebody is doing uh, spying, what will happen? He will be removed or he will be eliminated. And somebody else will be put in his place who is positive. Then in business, if somebody is cheating, they will be removed and the opposite person will be put. So similarly, in our own mind, we start with our own mind. You have to remove those negative thieves and corrupt emotions which are there inside yourself. So if you can remove them, how to remove them? First, you have to make them weak. But normally what happens, they become so strong that you are not able to separate yourself from them. You are getting carried away with them. You are not observing anger, but you are yourself anger. So if you can separate yourself first and just observing, not only anger, any problem, all your problems in life are due to this only. It's all manayeva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayo. The mind itself is the cause of your bondage, your suffering or your liberation or freedom or happiness. So the mind comprises of emotions, thoughts, logical analysis, conceptual understanding, philosophical ideas, all kinds of things comprise the mind. So if you have all kachara in your mind, if you are watching movies which are showing crime, violence, then kachara is filled up in your mind. You will get only those thoughts. If you read such books, thriller books, crime thrillers, then you will get uh, such thoughts and you will start behaving like them. Yad bhavam tad bhavati. If you go to a nice place and enjoy nature, or you went to Gangotri and see the Himalayas, then you have that impact, peace on you. So that's why we say that you know, whatever thoughts, yad bhavam tad bhavati. When you take bath, we will ask you to think of Ganga River. You must have gone to Ganga River sometime and taken bath. So you remember Ganga, 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 Ganga. Go on telling Ganga, 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 remembering and then take bath. And that effect will come on you. It is a suggestive process, hypnotism. You, bhavam tad bhavati, whatever you want, you will get. So, whatever thoughts you are entertaining, only that will be there for you. If you are entertaining negative thoughts, only negativity will be there for you. If you are entertaining anger, greed, lust, jealousy, all this arrogance, then only those things will be there and you will be suffering. But if you are entertaining their opposites, that is love, affection, compassion, dharma, abhayam, sattva samshuddhi, jnana yoga vyavasthiti, dhanam, damascha, yajnascha, swadhyaya, stapa, arjavam, honesty. Ahimsa, Satya, Makro, Satyaga, Kshanti, Apaishnam, Raya, Bhutesh, Alo, Luktvam, Mardavam, Softness, Reed, Intelligence, Achapalam, Stability, Tejak, Shama, Bhruti, Shaucham, Adroho, Nabhimanita. These are the Daivi Sampa, Divine Qualities. If you inculcate Divine Qualities in yourself and in your 
family members and in your uh, colleagues and in your society and in the envi entire environment, then the whole world will be divine. Yeah. But if you inculcate the opposite uh, feature, dambho, darpo, abhimanascha, boasting, pride, arrogance, ego, krodha, paurushya mevacha, anger, harshness, these are all due to ajnana. No, ajnana means abhijadasya pardha sampadam, asurim, these are asurim sampadas. In the 16th chapter, he has given the list. So what is happening today? You open the TV, open the newspaper, all negative things will be there. Nobody will try to do anything positive. But there are people who do positive things in this world. That's why the world is continuing. There are people who will do charity. You go to some temples or Ramakrishna Mat or even the Gurudwaras, they are serving food free of cost to everybody. People are going and eating in large numbers. And there are people who are serving Ram Krishna Mission, RSS, and various other voluntary organizations will go and serve people who are in pain and suffering for whatever reasons. So that is heroism. And this is villainism to cause negative impact on the society. That is villainism. So in the Bhagavad Gita 6th chapter, it is mentioned, you are your own friend and you are your own enemy. Pandur Atma Atmanastha Sayan Atma Atmana Jitaha. If you have conquered yourself, if you have controlled yourself fully in your own grip, you have, if you have put yourself in your own grip strongly, then you are your own friend. You are not able to control yourself. You are blasting out and blurting out and doing all kinds of negative criminal and illegal activities. Then you are your own enemy. Because sooner or later you will be creating enemies who will come and attack you and will kill you also. Like if you commit a crime, the police will catch you. And you will be put in jail and you may be killed. So, you are your own friend and you are your own enemy. Uddhareda Atmana, it's your choice, you want to fall down, then you become your own enemy by doing all bad things. If you want to go up, Uddhareda Atmana Atmanam Na Atmanam Avasadaye Don't allow yourself to fall. Elevate yourself. Lift yourself up. So you lift yourself up through positive emotions. Daivi Sampat. And you are, you follow yourself into the negative emotions. Asuri Sampat. Simple. This is Dharma Yoga. I explained to you. So this is the sum and substance of all religions also. They are telling the same thing in different ways. In different contexts, different situations. But then people don't Understand, they do all, in the name of that religion, they will do all bad things. They will, they will do all the negative activities by giving the certification from a particular religion. So that is itself wrong. And opposite religious people will start attacking these people because of that. This itself is wrong. In the scripture, whatever is mentioned, is not what they are interpreting. First of all, they never read the scriptures. How many Hindus have read Bhagavad Gita? How many Muslims have read Quran? How many Christians really understand Bible? So, they don't understand Guru Granth Sahib and all this. If they understand, if they really study in depth and understand, then there will be a lot of positive things. Of course, I do admit that in certain religious scriptures, Outside India, some negative things are also mentioned. But those things have to be properly contextualized. According to some scholars, those things don't apply now. Like many statements of violence mentioned in some of the scriptures of the uh, other religions. They are actually referring to certain incidents and wars which took place long back. For example, in Bhagavad Gita also, there is a war. Now, does it mean that Bhagavad Gita is telling you fight a war every day and kill everybody? It is not telling like that. It is contextualization is not understood properly. Then it means uh, if you interpret in such a way that every day, today also and everywhere, not only in Kurukshetra is that at that point of time, but everywhere else also, you start uh, fighting wars and killing people. That is not true. 
So this, this contextualization is very important. So the in the scriptures of other religions also, such statements are there which are not correctly understood or interpreted. Of course, I do admit that they mean that thing to some extent, but it has to be discounted, interpreted correctly by the correct guidance of the correct uh, scholars. Most of the people give wrong interpretations. So th this core issue is only this, shun bad and imbibe good. Be good and do. Dharma, that is goodness is dharma, badness is asa. Goodness is divine, badness is demonic. Divy and asa. So we have to remove this. That is why we have the famous sloka or mantra, Asatoma Satgabaya. Remove the untruth and take me to the truth. Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya. Take me away from darkness into light. Light is truth. And Ruchorma Amritanga. Once you are away from darkness, you are going away from death into the immortal, the Amruta. And then Amruta Tattvam, that is the divine principle. We have discussed this already. To reach that is liberation, moksha, heaven, apavarga, or nirvana. So many words are used in so many different environments or contexts. Okay, now I stop here. Ask me any questions on what I discussed today. Yes, Bhaguru? Yeah. Any questions in the chat box? There are no questions in the chat box. Yeah, I unmuted everybody. You can ask questions. <clears throat> so today they are fully knowledgeable, I think, with the, the dose of uh, philosophy. Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Uh, no, sir. Sir, uh, do you have a PowerPoint presentation uh, regarding that, suppose, uh, various things you will tell, like the, the list of negative emotions and the opposite of those, and uh, no, all the discussion making, do you have? If you want, you can make uh, for me, because I am nowadays not uh, working on uh, systems. I am only doing, uh, even tomorrow's conference, more after we have two days big conference, you know that. We have got the links also. We can attend that also. There also I am talking only extempore. Uh, PowerPoints I am not making. If somebody wants to make, I welcome. I can support that. Yes. Okay. Anybody volunteer for this? And uh, you give a draft. It will be Reviewed and approved. Yeah. What is that? No, he just want uh, Babagar wanted someone to volunteer to make the PPT mm. and given to you so that uh, that will be approved yeah. for yeah. correctness. This recording can be used. Yeah. And... Yeah. This recording itself is a. Sort of supporting that in our book also we have written all these things in the second chapter of our dharma yoga book we have given a big matrix of the quotations on eight, 20 different values from different different scriptures that is a research duty but this is very simple dharma yoga technique which have only three steps are there you observe you identify the negative emotion then second step is replace it with the opposite of it. That is dharma principle. Then after that, third step is, the, by, by second step itself, the problem is solved. Third step will be what you should do, how, how you should live your life. It is service-oriented approach. Why, why you should do? Because most of the people, almost all the people are doing everything under the influence of these negative emotions. But if you are doing under the influence of positive emotions. 
and because of them only the society is running and we are able to survive if they are not there then there would have been total elimination destruction of the society adharma would have 100% kaliva adharma is 75% 25% dharma is there in kaliva dwapara it is 50 50 so because of the 25% there is survival of the society so these uh, dharma are the positive values there are people like ram krishna mission or nirma mission or rss or so many other organizations charity there there are charitable organizations suppose ram krishna mission you did suppose ram there was no ram krishna mission what would have happened nobody would have been even told all these things most of the people in the society today are under the influence of ram krishna mission since childhood i like me i was brought up under ram krishna mission what i am doing is nothing but same ram krishna mission type of activity what we are doing here billions and billions of people and similarly other missions are there or there are many others there is a nirankari samagam based in punjab or delhi so they conduct many meetings and there one requirement they have is to go to that meeting is a big uh, gathering in a big a uh, big ground hundreds and thousands of people will come so the minimum compulsory requirement is whom so may you meet you should mahatma you have to call everyone that means you have to respect every other person as mahatma in fact all these initiatives are trying to tell the same thing which i told today but they are not able to articulate or convey in a such a simple way they will be complicated too much and their ideal personalities will be different somebody will pick up buddha somebody will pick up mahavir somebody will pick up hanuman somebody will pick up rama somebody will pick up somebody else the other religions they pick up somebody else so as a result it turns out uh, that you know they as if they are uh, dedicating themselves to that particular uh, emblem or that brand so because of that brand and all that there will be another brand and brand and brand will start fighting that is all wrong what is the essential core principle you have to understand they are trying to convey the same thing in their own way in their own context of that particular time that particular socio economic cultural historical context and that was recorded at that time and now it is being repeated like for example rama and rama that was at that time that even that happened that doesn't mean every day exactly same thing will happen it cannot happen exactly exactly like ravana sir nobody will be there there may be some bits and pieces cases but principle is more important than the case this is only an example anybody has any disc feel free to discuss it is uh, there is nothing uh, this i have developed over a long period of time with a great amount of effort and if it is practiced it can give results yes antulu ravindra kumar sharma ka Unmute yourself, Santil Gare. Namaskar, sir. This regarding tomorrow's seminar, sir. Where to? Shall I ask this one? Hello. This is regarding tomorrow's seminar. No, two days seminar. It's a night. Yeah. Shall I ask something about this one, sir? So it is a NL conference. It's a computer science conference. Artificial intelligence. and machine learning applications to computational sanskrit natural language processing and cognition so basically artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques have been developed over the last many decades and are being applied to every different walk of life health agriculture 
for education, business, insurance, finance, banking, advertising. All these I have covered in my book on Big Data Analytics. And now in this conference, we are discussing on how the techniques of artificial intelligence and machine learning can be applied, can be deployed in natural language processing domain, in particular reference to Sanskrit. Why do you call computational Sanskrit? It is like saying computational biology. Biology is there, but computational biology is also there, which means the mathematical or computational structures or algorithms or methodologies used in biology, like bioinformatics and so on. Similarly, the computational or algorithmic procedural techniques used in Sanskrit language, like Panini's algorithms. Panini's sutras are all algorithms for language processing. But then Navya Nyaya, Nyaya inferences. So these are the computational Sanskrit aspects. Till now, many conferences were held for the last 10, 15 years on the computational linguistics, Sanskrit computational linguistics, computational Sanskrit linguistics on that name. Sanskrit computational linguistics, where the conventional computer science techniques were applied, like syntax analysis, for parsing, and code generation for translation purpose, machine translation, summarization, conventional techniques. With, before the advent of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So now that artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques have become very popular, even BTEC courses are being offered. Beta course in ECE and instrumentation has been scrapped. A beta course in artificial intelligence, machine learning has been initiated. So, and data science, all are similar. So, that much of importance, the center stage, the entire computer science is the center stage has now become artificial intelligence and machine learning, not only for the entire computer science, but for the entire business in all domains and the entire life itself, in every aspect of life. So, how they can be deployed in computational Sanskrit on one side and natural language processing in general and for Indian language processing or for the European language processing. In cognition, when it comes to, we talk of cognition, we are talking of chat GPT, some kind of uh, machine intelligence, computational intelligence, computational algorithms, computational intelligence. So whatever child GPT does, very advanced, very great success, greatest uh, success of artificial intelligence and machine learning till today is child GPT and similar products, transformers they are called. So they are able to generate natural language based on inputs, based on training, based on content training by predicting generating word by word or character by character, depending on the technique used. So there are semantic space techniques used where the words related to each other are kept in together in the n-dimensional space, semantic space. But all this is tailor-made for English language and maybe French language, they're all very similar. And of course, they're expanding for other languages but Sanskrit is kept out. Now they are trying to use the same technology. It's called language model, large language model, LLM. Same LLM is being sought to be used for Sanskrit or for Hindi or Telugu or Indian languages, which has a lot of problems. It is not possible. For example, Sanskrit has Samasam and Santi, which cannot be used for training, LLM unless you break up all that. So what we are exploring the possibilities, how the Paninian and Patanjali's techniques, or Panini wrote the sutras and Patanjali wrote the Vashya and Patanjali also wrote the Vakyapadiya, uh, hundreds of texts, most major te texts, we have given algorithms to process words and synthesize words, generation of words, 
and semantic relationship between words like from sanskrit from one single root you get a hundred words like sukram karane kru from kru you get karta karma kriya karana karaka and so on one from one root it's a highly structured highly evolved and highly computationally sophisticated language more than english more than french but all these features which are inherent in sanskrit language and its grammar like pandit's grammar have not been either studied or understood or applied in the artificial intelligence or machine learning so that is the purpose of this conference we got it but except the one keynote address i think the first keynote address is on the same issue applying i mean using the sanskrit shastras for artificial intelligence in sanskrit so this talk is being given by one amrit krishna dr amrit krishna is in cochin he is in cambridge he did his post doctoral in cambridge is a doctorate from iit kharagpur he is the best uh, speaker on this topic he is giving this topic lecture tomorrow i can put the links on the group you can attend it's a mostly uh, it's a hybrid conference which are more than 50% are online lectures and uh, remaining are physical lectures so so on technology of course those who are not from computer science background will not understand anything except that sanskrit part if you are if you know sanskrit or pandi grammar so that's what it is at the venue sir venue sir conference when you came it in narayan guda hyderabad that also i told you no? i could have already posted it many times came it in yeah. why are you asking again and again the, the link is posted in the post group i registered sir that i would like to come for that one yeah you did mention here you know it's came it in right sir okay thank you sir namaskar all right i think we'll close now okay uh, anybody else wants to ask any question otherwise we will go for prarthana we yeah, will go for prarthana it's late yeah we shall actually om swasti prajabhya paripalayantam nyayena margena mahim mahishah go brahmanebhya shubhamastu nityam loka samasta sukhino bhavantu काले वर्षतु शालिनी देशो शालिनीद सर्वे सुखि सर्वे सन्तु सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्य दुख भाग भवे ओम शांति 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 ओम पूर्ण मद पूर्ण मिद पूर्णा पूर्ण मुदच्य पूर्ण से पूर्ण मदा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओम शांति 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 सर्वे जन सुखिनो भवन्तु स्वस्ति धन्यवाद मंडी नाउ लेट लेट अस गो फॉर नेशनल एंथम चला चित्रा बोल जनगणमन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंधु गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्छल जलधित रंगा तब शुभ नामे जागे तब शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तब जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे 
जय 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 हे जय हिंद जय हिंद धन्यवाद अमलेंडू चला चित्रपाठ